want to present one study today with an enormous amount of data. I'm not going to be getting into the theory behind it because the theory, I think, will be evident to the crowd here. But essentially, I'm running a very simple study looking for latent inhibition in humans while monitoring their gaze during the task. The task that I used is the video game that I've used before. And the very first thing the subjects learn to do up in the top left screen there is they learn to press a particular key on the keyboard very rapidly to shoot at a spaceship. So I attach a response to a particular stimulus. And then in the experimental phase, they get transported into a different setting where a sensor will appear here for 20 seconds, flashing. And that signals that the spaceship is about to occur. So what happens is as they learn that relationship, their responding moves up. They begin to respond in the CS before the spaceship arrives. So the CS is 20 seconds long. During the first five seconds, nothing happens. Then the spaceship appears and remains for the rest of the CS. So my dependent variable here is going to be the number of key presses per second during the CS. This is the screen that the participants are looking at. And I'm monitoring their vision using sensibilitoric instrument um, red system. I'm getting data samples at a rate of 60 per second. I'm going to report these gaze data as the amount of time spent looking in particular areas of the screen. The design is very simple. I have a latent inhibition group that plays the game. During that time, the red sensor appears six times with nothing happening. The control group simply sits there watching the game with nothing else occurring. During conditioning, the red sensor comes on, it's paired with the spaceship appearing ten times, and then I run ten trials of extinction. <coughs> During the pre-exposure phase, there's no behavioral data to speak of. That is, the subjects tend to just sit there. They don't respond. And every once in a while, a subject might go tick, 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 but it's just, it's almost non-existent. So we're going to go straight to the eye data in pre-exposure. There's a mess. Now, <coughs> what you see there are about 30,000 data points. Every dot represents a 1 60th of a second slice of time where somebody in that group is looking. And as they look in the same place over and over, the temperature and the color gets hotter. So, this is the latent inhibition group in the first pre exposure trial. You can see they're looking all over the screen, but they're predominantly burning in on the sensor. They're looking at that stimulus that's just come on. Whereas the control group, during the same period of time, is pretty evenly distributing their gaze just all over the screen. By the last pre exposure trial, wrong key, last pre exposure trial, it doesn't show up too well here, but they're actually looking at the sensor less. The density of the blue dots is a little greater, and you're starting to see hot spots in different areas of the screen. But they're showing an habituation of that orienting response to the CS, if you will. Whereas the control group is still just looking around everywhere. Now, the fun thing to do with all these data all is to begin to quantify them, put them in the graphs. So, that's what this graph is showing. What you see here are the seconds looking at the sensor CS. So you have seconds looking for each second of each trial uh, during pre-exposure. The control group down here at the bottom simply not looking at the CS. The pre-exposure group in the first second, they're looking at it quite a bit, and then that habituates within the trial. Okay, while well, the light's on, they look at it, and they start looking for what? The second trial, they start off looking at it less, and then that habituates within the trial. So we're seeing a nice analog here to say a short term, a type of long term, type of habituation graph to the orient response. Graph. That's okay. We're going to go straight to the conditioning phase now. Now here we have behavioral data. Okay, this, they should be responding on this key when the CS comes on if they're expecting the US to occur. And here are what those data look like. We're looking at responses per second on the key. So we're getting very vigorous responding for each of the first five seconds of the CS. This is the anticipatory responding. This is during the period of time that the U.S. is not present. And this is again for each of the 10 tribes. What you see here is my trial four, the control group, 
one was not predisposed to showing a very robust response. It simply is not occurring in the late inhibition of a predisposed group. Out here on trial nine, the groups don't differ, but they do. There are a couple of differences here on trial ten. So even after nine trials, they still have not converged behaviorally. So behaviorally, I have very robust evidence of a latent inhibition type mechanism operating here. And I've got it in the explicit absence of any type of a masking task. So let's look at the I data. Here's the first conditioning trial with a latent inhibition group. Again, this is the very first five seconds of the CS. Because when the US appears, their gaze goes directly to it. It's flying all over the screen and they're just simply looking at it and not anything else. So I'm showing you uh, where they're looking during the CS. And they're looking at the sensor some, but they're also looking at the rest of the screen. You see some hot spots around. That's because they've seen this thing ten times or six times already. But by the last trial, we see a very I'm sorry, the control group's first conditioning trial. You see that they predominantly the only place they're looking is at the CS. Okay, which makes sense. It's the first time they've seen the CS. <coughs> so they're really honing in on it. By the last trial, something really interesting is occurring. The latent inhibition group, they're glancing down here at the CS quite a bit, but when they're not looking at it, most of their, their gaze points are focused up here in this upper left quadrant. That's particularly interesting because that is where the U.S. appears. Okay? So they're sitting there in their space station monitoring their galaxy. When this light comes on, the U.S. flies in from that upper left corner. So, what we're seeing here is a new response, really, what I wasn't expecting to see in early experiments. Not only are they looking at the CS and emitting a behavioral response, they're looking in anticipation for where the U.S. is going to appear. They're learning where the U.S. is going to appear. And the control group is showing the same thing. You expect that they look at the CS, and then they turn in and look at the area where the U.S. is going to appear. So, let's quantify these data. This, this is um, in time looking at the sensor CS for each, the first five seconds of the CS for each trial. Let's very quickly look at the latent inhibition group. On the first trial, they're not looking at that sensor very much. They may have glanced at it kind of quickly, but not much at all. On the second trial, at least on the first second, they recover that oriented response. And then again, eventually, it's very quickly. And then that recovery in that first second really doesn't change much across the course of the condition. So we get some weak recovery of the oriented response in the latent inhibition group. Of course, Dr. Hall would predict that. Now, the control group, they're paying a lot of attention to CS on the first trial, on the second trial, on the third trial, especially during the first second, and that really doesn't change across trials very much. And overall, if you look at the attention being paid by the late inhibition group, overall, it never really gets back up to the level that the control group is showing. <laughs> if you're not looking at the CS, where are you looking? Well, this is where they're looking at the rest of the screen. If you're not looking at the CS, these are the other screen zones. The red there is the US zone. That's the area of the screen where the US is going to appear. These other colors are the other areas. And what you see is that on, by trial four, the point at which robust responding had emerged in the control group, when they're not looking at the CS, they're predominantly looking up in the area where the U.S. is going to touch. Which is kind of this. It's camouflage. So they're predominantly looking up at the area where the U.S. is going to occur. There are some differences between the groups here, but I'm not terribly convinced about what they tell me. There are places where the response looking for the U.S. is stronger in the control group than in the latent inhibition group. There's also a place or two where it's stronger in the latent inhibition group. Overall, it looks like that, that U.S. search response <coughs> directed by the presence of the CS might be latently inhibited, but it's not terribly convincing. Now let's look at extinction. 
VVS represents responses per, responses per second for all 20 seconds of the CS on each trial of extinction for both groups. No US is present, so any response to the CS is anticipatory, if you will. What you see is that the subjects in both groups do the same thing. There are no group differences during extinction, so they converged after 10 trials of condition. What you see is responding ramps up during the first five seconds, up until it hits this arrow, which is the point in time which the U.S. would normally occur. And it doesn't occur. So at that point in time, their expectation gets violated, and they stop responding. Within the trial, you see a decrease, and between the trials, you see a decrease. So we've got two processes going on here, probably. One is, probably, this big decrease between trials and overall responding. That's an extinction process. But then you see this decrease within the trial after about the fifth second, which is probably a process of generalization deference. Okay, that is, they know when the U.S. is going to arrive. And it doesn't arrive, so they stop responding. They're timing the U.S. So in this method, they give you the correct response, so they tell you what's about to happen. They look on the screen where that thing's about to happen, so they tell you behaviorally that they know where it's going to occur. And this extinction data says they also know when it's going to occur. So you get some very rich data out of this method without having to have them introspect about things and ask them questions. Now, what happens uh, with our the eye data? Well, first extinction trial, they look at the sensor, they look up here for where the U.S. is going to occur, back and forth. Control group does the same thing, back and forth. By the last extinction trial, though, late beneficial group looks at the CS, and then they look everywhere. So that U.S. search response is subject to extinction. And that's also true in the group. These are the data for looking at the sensor. And it's a mess. But if we do what these statistics tell us, and try to, or if we try to show what the statistics tell us, we'll collapse across the groups and it gets a little cleaner. Then I'm going to average across each of two trials and look at two trial blocks and expand the scale a little. <coughs> and it becomes a little bit more legible. So during extinction, in the first second, they look at the CS. That doesn't change across trials. What changes across trials is how they look at the CS during the period of time when the U.S. is supposed to be there. So in the first trial, Look at the CS, look at it less, look at it less. It's supposed to be here, whoops, it's not here. They go back to looking at the CS. And that tends to increase during the duration of the CS. It does that on trials 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6. At trials 7 and 8, it tends to flatline. It's actually decreasing on trials 9 and 10. Okay, so the processing of that CS, the processing of the CS um, changes over time tend to look at it. They, they, they increase their processing as Mr. Hall would expect, and then that itself um, extinguishes over time. Then finally, the most beautiful slide of all, this is where they're looking on the screen when they're not looking at CS. Just look at the red here. They're looking at the zone where the, where the U.S. is going to appear. And that's decreasing over trials. And as that decreases, Looking at other areas of the screen tends to increase. Okay? So that U.S. search response that I observed is subject to extinction. So there we have it. Latent inhibition appears related to the orienting to the CS. Attention decreases during pre-exposure. Weekly returns during conditioning. <coughs> Attention appears to decrease to the CS during conditioning. So later on, temporarily increase again extinction. Expectation of the U.S. is timed, and that expectation itself commands attention, a direct attention to where the U.S. is supposed to appear. And there are lots of other aspects of these results that consist of everything we think we know about conditioning. We simply don't have time to tell you about it all now. Thank you very much. Couple of questions. Una pregunta, si no hay una duda, alguna pregunta que hacer. Take that as, as uh, 
confirmation of the clerical in my exposition. <laughs>